Code Lady here. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the wonderful world of iOS app development using Swift 4. Now, if you've never, ever written a line of code before in your life, don't worry about it. I'm here to walk you through the steps and hold your hand. Today, we're going to build a very, very simple app because I want you guys to get your feet wet right away. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a counter app. But the first thing we need to do is we need to download Xcode. And that is the environment in which all iOS apps are built. It's very simple. If you've ever downloaded an app to your computer before, you can do this. It's really simple. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to add user interface elements. What are user interface elements? Well, those are the buttons and the sliders and the text fields that you interact with with everyday apps. So I'll show you how to do that. And then next, I'm going to show you how to get those buttons and user interface elements to actually connect with your code. So we're going to learn that, and then we're going to start writing your first lines of code. So I'm really excited. Get ready. You're going to learn iOS app development in a really fun, easygoing way. And I look forward to helping you out. Let's start the lecture. To begin writing your apps, the first thing you're going to need to do is download something called Xcode. Now, Xcode is the environment in which you will write all of your code. So in order to find that, you can go to developer.apple.com forward slash Xcode. Okay? And it'll, it'll get you to this page and it will give you a way more detailed explanation of what Xcode is and what it can do. The latest version coming out is Xcode 10. I currently have Xcode 9.4 loaded on mine. Um, I believe Xcode 10 is still in beta. So I don't like to do anything that's in beta, so I always download the latest release. But feel free to walk through this and take a look at it if you feel if you should feel so inclined to do so. It can be a little bit of dry reading, but uh, it is actually fascinating. So you can download it by clicking this download button. And that will take you to, it'll ask for your um, App Store credentials to log in. I already have mine, so I'm not going to walk you through it because it'll show all my credentials. But it'll just walk you through to the App Store. Uh, alternatively, you can go to the App Store icon on your Mac and click on that. And up here in the search box, simply type in Xcode. And here you will see it up here. And again, go through the steps as you normally would do so in order to install an app. Fantastic. All right. So for the first app that we're going to do today is we're going to create a very simple app. And here's what the app is going to look like. We are going to have a label that says, let's start counting. And down here is a button. And every time we click on the counter, it's going to add one to whatever the number is there. So ready? Let's go. I'm going to click the button once and the number is one. And every time I click it, the number goes up. Okay. So let's learn how to build your very first, very easy iOS app. To begin with, you're going to open up your Xcode and I'm going to go down here, the second one, just create a new Xcode project. Here we go. I'm going to have a single view application and then I'm going to click next. I'm going to name it counter app and I'm just using my name, my organization. Here's my identifier, which is really my website in reverse. So it's com dot the code lady. Make sure the language is selected at Swift and not Objective C. And make sure none of these are checked. Once that's done, simply click next. Select where you want it to save it and then click create. Now you have the beginning of your very first iOS app. Right now, a lot of this looks pretty daunting, but don't worry. By the time I'm done teaching you all, this will become very, very familiar. So basically, this is sort of like your open screen, and we're not going to go into too much of this now because it really is nothing you really need to concern yourself with. What I want you to do is go over to something on the left-hand side. It's called main.storyboard. Okay, so we'll click on that, and here's our storyboard. So this looks like a very blank which it is, iPhone screen. So in order to do this, I'm sorry, in order to create our app, we're going to have to add elements. So these are what we call user interface elements. In order to grab those things, we need to come down to the lower right. You see this icon that is circled? I think that it says it's the object library. So you want to make sure that is clicked. Here's where you can find all the user elements. 
such as labels and buttons and text fields and sliders, things that are very common on the iPhone. So let's start by building out the user interface. This is what the user is going to see. So the first thing I want you to do is we need a label. And the label is going to count, um, keep track of really, or show I should say. It's going to show what the current count is. So I click on the label. I'm just going to drag it out here and release it. And next code gives me a nice little dotted blue or dash blue line. I'm just going to make this a lot larger. There we go. I'm not worrying about the design aspect of this. If I click it on over here, if you see to the right, if you don't see this, simply go up to the very right button and that'll open up this panel. And this will just give me, see here, we're working on the label. I can change the color. Let's say this for kick, so I'm going to change it to red. See, and then the label, the word label. And again, I'm still highlighted. If I don't highlight it, I really can't do much with it, so I'm going to highlight it. And the font, I'm just going to bump it up a little bit and see how that increases. And one last thing, I'm just going to align the text to the center. Now, the next thing I need, and really the last thing I need, is a button. So here's a button right below. Okay, I know that. And I'm going to click and drag. Okay, and just like we did with a label, I can see now up here it's highlighted as the button. If I click on the label, we're talking about the label. Now I'm talking about the button. And I'm going to change the name from button. I can do that both ways. I can do either click on here and change it. Or I can just go under here with the title. I'm going to say, oh, um, click, click, let's see, click here to add. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so it's, I can in increase it if I want to or make any kind of size adjustments. You know, it all depends on what you want to, want it to look like. So that's great. You have the user interface and that's looking good, but it's not doing anything. If I were to run this app right now, nothing, it wouldn't do anything because there's no code. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to connect these two things to our view controller dot swift file. And that is where you actually write the code. So to give myself a little bit more room, I'm going to go up to the upper right corner and I'm just going to close out this side panel. Fantastic. And then over here, you see the interlocking rings that allow me to open up two files at once. So I'm going to click on that. And the second file is the view controller dot swift. Now I'm getting a little smushed here for screen real estate. So if you are having the same thing, simply go down to this button down here and it's going to close out our documentation hierarchy. So I'm down here. Get that out now, I can see. Okay, I just want to move this over here. Fantastic. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I need to connect this label to my code. And I need to connect this button to my code. Now, my font seems to be really big. I'm just going to try it. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so now we can take a look at this in a much clearer picture. So let's go to the label. And the first thing we're going to do to connect it to our ViewController.Swift, which was created when we made this counter app. I'm going to take your label, whoops, highlight the label, and I want you to hit Control, click, drag. See that blue line? I'm going to put it right under this line where it says Class View Controller and let go. All right? I'm going to do that again just to show you. Click on it. So if it's not clicked, click on it. Hit the Control button while, it, while it's held down. I'm clicking and dragging and I'm getting that blue line and I'm going to release it. Okay, so it's an outlet and I'll explain that later. And I'm going to call it um, Total Count Label. And it's of type UI label, so it's a user interface label, which is what we added, so that's good. Don't worry about the storage. We're not going to get into the techniques of uh, the storage at any point soon. <laughs> um, and then you're going to hit connect. Great. So we have an IB outlet and it's a variable. So it's going to change and I'll get into variables a little bit later on. And we just called a total count label. All right. I'm just going to make a little room by just hitting enter. Fantastic. So we've got one of our user interfaces and this is an 
outlet. That means it's going to show us something. We're going to do something and it's going to show us. It's, it's, uh, it's an outlet. It's an outlet for expression, if you want to put it that way. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, let's talk about this button. Now, this button is going to be where all the magic happens. This is where we're going to write all the code. So what I want to do is control, same thing as I did before, control, click, and drag. This time, I like to write my buttons, which will be functions, toward the bottom part. I don't like to, I just, it's my own, it's my own um, aesthetic. Um, I'm not writing it below this last curly brace. I am taking it right above the last curly brace, okay? And I'm going to release. Now, this time it's not an outlet. This is actually an action. We're going to perform some duties when we click on this, okay? And this time, I think I will call this, let's see, I call that total count label. And I will say, maybe, oh, add to counter. I'll put it that way. Leave the type as any. Touch up inside is the, the actual event of touching it. You can just leave all of these as they are and hit connect. Now, check this out. Instead of an outlet, as we did with a label, we now have an action, okay? And it's a function, okay? So a function is actually creating a bunch of series of steps. It's like following steps to for a recipe to make cookies. And you have to go through step by step in the order that presented in order to get the desired outcome, right? All right, so now we have a function called add to counter. Now I've got an open and close curly brace. I'm just going to get in there. And there's a few things we need to accomplish. Well... We need to accomplish, we have to have something that will add the count. The first thing I want to do is create a variable, okay? And a variable, I'll get into a little bit more, um, but just for now, because I want to get you guys up and running on your very first app, variable is something that holds information or can hold something. For instance, I might have several boxes. I might box might have one that says socks, and I throw in red socks, and maybe the next day I throw in yellow socks or pink socks, okay? It can change, but it's always going to have socks in there. Another box I could say label as toys, and I can throw in, you know, all kinds of various toys, but I can't put socks in there. I can only put toys, okay? So that is just a very quick, quick explanation, and I will get into that a little bit more in, in later um, lessons, but I want to get this out to you today so that you can really get dive right into your first app. So I'm just going to call this var, and that's the um, shortcut name or the way you declare a variable. I'm going to call it count, and I'm going to set that equal to zero, okay? So that's good. We have our variable, and it's equal to zero. Now, I'm in our function right here, okay? A couple things I want to do. I have to keep track of the count, so every time I click on the add to counter, it's going to add one. So in order to do that, I'm going to say count is going to equal count, whatever existing is right now, plus one. So if it's four, it's going to add one to make it five. It's, if it's seven, it's going to add one to make it eight, and so on and so forth. Fantastic. Now, that's great. So we've got the count going. The next thing we need to do, and really the last thing we need to do, is have this label up here show the count. Remember, it's an outlet. So that's going to show us something. It's going to, it's not going to, it's not going to do anything other than, um, react to other things going on in the app. Okay. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, what do we call that? Okay. Total count. And when you start typing it, it should auto complete. So total count label dot text because we want to operate the text property of it. So, Add the dot text. Okay, you can clear away. Okay, so total count label dot text. Eh, ignore the warning. Is going to equal be equal to. Hmm. Now this is where it gets tricky. We're gonna have it, the text equal a number, but if I were to say count, they're gonna give me a problem because this is a number and this is asking for text. So a label can only take uh, a, a string. So see, so what I'm going to do here, quick turn around, oops, string, open and close parentheses. There we go. Now I've just said, could make this object count into a string. Okay, there's a couple ways I could have done this, but this is really the quickest and easiest uh, for now. 
Um, again, I'm going to get into more about strings and integers uh, in it, w with regards to variables in another lecture. But just follow along and let's get you up and running with your first app. Fantastic. Okay, let's test this baby out. So I'm going to go up to here where this diamond is, this play button. And I can just, I set mine to, if you want to click on it, I'm just setting mine to eight, iPhone 8 Plus. Again, click on whatever you might have up here. Choose whatever iPhone size you want. I'm Again, 8 Plus is fine with me. And then hit the play button. And wait for it to compile. Build succeeded is always a great sign. Fantastic. Here it is. Let's give it a shot. I'm going to click on this button and hopefully this label will change. Let's give it a shot. Okay, there's one, two, three. All right, here we go. Congratulations. You just learned how to build your first iOS app. In the next lecture, hopefully, we will get to building out more advanced apps. I'll see you then.